Now on to the FA Cup final. 1-0 victory to Chelsea. It was their, their eighth FA Cup victory. It was a dour game, to say the least. One goal, which was a penalty given awarded to Eden Hazard. He converted that in about the 17th minute. And from then on, Chelsea just sat back and allowed United to attack. And United did an attack which just left it as one of the worst FA Cup finals I've ever seen. Yeah, look, it's you look back, United certainly dominant, I'd say, in, in one instance with possession and, and you know, how they've played the game. But, um, yeah, as soon as that, that Jones tackle, more of an error than a tackle, I'd say. I don't know how he didn't um, really get a red card by the end of it. But, um, yeah, it was simple as that. As soon as they put one pass, they just parked the bus in their own way. A bit ironic against Jose, but... Um, yeah, I think, like you said, it was a dire game. Um, certainly sums up United season as far as not getting quite close but to the success. But, um, look, I, that's just how it is. And I think that's just a poor way to end United season. Jones made that mistake early on to allow Hazard the space to run through onto goal. But then he did well to get Hazard into the corner. But then he let himself down again by tackling Hazard. He could have, if he stayed still, there a likelihood was Hazard would miss that shot because it was from the corner. And De Gea, we know how good he is, it would have been a hard shot to, to get on target. You're exactly right. I think that's it's, that twelve seconds or so is just shows the inconsistency United's backlines had all season, especially with Eric Bailly outside um, of the of the starting XI a lot with injury. But um, yeah, just he allowed him in the inside so easily. He did so well to recover and gain his position back. But unfortunately, yeah, just. I think it's more reckless challenge than anything and, yeah, gifted Chelsea the goal and therefore the victory. Biggest news that headline that we've got to, that comes out of that final is have United improved this season? Um, when you look at the gap between themselves and City, the direct rivalry, no. Um, when you look at Silverware, um, what they've picked up this year, no. Um, but I think that I said this I think a couple of weeks ago that United season wasn't all that bad. I think that they're, they're a team underperforming, which is probably the best sign you could have at the moment. A team that's that's not performing to their best and still finishing second. I think that's that's a fantastic effort still. But you know, you look at players like I hate saying Pogba's name over and over again, but just that as soon as um, you know as Sanchez came in, his form probably dropped off a bit. Trying to work on that left side, um, and I think. I, I, I don't know if it's directly related, but if Liverpool managed to win the Champions League uh, this week or next week, um, then I think United fans are obviously going to definitely start thinking that this season was was one to forget. Well, I already see it as a failure of, this, of a season. We talk about the 19-point deficit between City and United. That's the equivalent of the 20th place West Brom and 8th place Everton in terms of gap. They haven't scored in three of their last four games. They, a trophy-less season, defeats to all promoted sides and West Brom, who finished last. They drew or d- were defeated by seven of the bottom ten sides. They knock, they're knocked out of the Carabao Cup final by Bristol City, knocked out of the UCL by Seville. Style of play is boring, no creativity. They rely on crosses, yet they don't have any wingers in the side. They have two fullbacks who were failed wingers playing in fullback positions. And then also... They just don't know how to pick a team apart. Lingard's probably Lingard and Matic are probably the only two players who have who have improved under Mourinho at the club. If you look at his signings, Zlatan, Mkhitaryan, Pogba, Lukaku, Matic, Lindelof, Sanchez, a lot of those haven't been successes. Zlatan was there for one year. Yes, he was successful that year. Pogba's not a success. Mat- Matic is. Lukaku, you could say, is. I think I think that Lukaku has been hard done by this season. Yeah, having he said he's scored, whether it's in FA Cup or the Premier League, he's been kicking goals um, for United, and I think he's had a, a strong start, especially to a new environment. Um, but I think he's had a great season. The first two names you said was Lutton and Mkhitaryan, obviously two players that aren't even at the club anymore. Mkhitaryan hitting his strides for Arsenal now as well, and Zlatan falling on the floor at LA Galaxy yeah. from what we saw <laughs> on the weekend. But yeah, look, Pogba, that's that's a hard one because he's probably one of the best in the league when he's at his best and then when he's at his worst he's looked at as just your average player that's cost United 90 million so um, yeah look time will tell I think I think the first 10 games of next season will will show I think that did this year as well when City beat United at Old Trafford and it was kind of season over already so you can always you can already tell that you know the first 10 games of the season are certainly going to be very important for next year and people will counter that counter that by saying that United's looking at United's record against the top six this season. But 
The way United play, they like to play on the counter. They like to sit back and then counter-attack sides. When you're playing those top six, that's the perfect way to play because all of those teams have more possession than United. So it's better for United to sit back and then counter those teams. But when they have to do all the playmaking in the game, that's when they struggle. They've struggled against those lower sides because they sit back, so United's got more possession and they're trying to counter or they're trying to play make through that defence. And against Chelsea in the FA Cup final, that's what they did. They sat back and United has no creativity to get behind the defenders. Yeah, exactly right. And when I talk about underperforming before, it's you look at, you know, it's a team that's done well against the fellow top six sides and then they've, you know, struggled against those, you know, bottom sides of three that came up in West Brom. I think there was a draw to Stoke early in the season as well. Um, and look, I think that's look, as, as well as the signs are bad. I think that's kind of not 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 the worst sign either, because you know you have this chance to to work on on the bottom sides and you can focus on them. And they're they're probably a lot obviously a lot easier to turn around than struggling against you know the the top six or whatever. So, you know, if they if United can you know work on you know probably not being so um, you know, I wouldn't say arrogant going into those games, but Mourinho probably just has to play a bit smarter against you know all twenty sides. Um, then yeah, United certainly could have pushed for for top spot. I think next year will be the biggest test in Mourinho's career. Yeah, certainly. Um, I think you know he's been handed a couple of seasons, plenty of money thrown, and there's some reports of you know even more to be spent this summer. So they're going to get well. The rumors are it's going to be Willian, one of them, and a 29 year old winger on his way to turning 30, and they're getting rid of Martial. Yeah, look, um, the Martial one's always. I've he's my favourite player at United, and I've I. Don't want to see him leave. It sounds like PSG are a, a great chance to pick him up. But um, look, there's there's a report. Alexander is another one that could come in that left back position, which is you know something you know it's been struggling at. Luke Shaw, I've always thought was a fine candidate, but that's just, the problem. They're recruiting players that are nearing the end of their careers, getting rid of young players, and then you've got Man City who are recruiting these young guns. They, their squad's average age is about 25. Yeah, exactly and, right. I think yeah, and Pep's Pep's just looking at it perfectly. He, he doesn't look for a direct replacement. It looks for the, the player to come in and then have someone coach. I think the, the one thing I've read is Delight from Ajax um, was to come in and he could be company's replacement. So he'll come in and company yeah. will pretty much mentor him into that role and you know, sit next to Stones or Otamendi or someone like that.